Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you already know who this is, man. This is the big bad kaiju of STP. This is O'Shea Edwards. And this ain't the one count. This ain't the two count. No, no, no. My man, you listening to the three count podcast. Woo, woo. Fashion, Welcome everybody to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering Ring, and I am your host Clifford Red Dog. Well, that's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. And by all the episodes I've asked you to do it, you should be calling me your Sherpa. But like every good Sherpa, you gotta have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. And that's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring today. You can find this man at Fight. You can fight, find this man at ROH. You can find this man at MCW, IWE, IWE, ECPW, RWA, Catalyst, Eclipse, Wrestling Lab, OWA, BCP, IWE. He is one-fifth of Shane Taylor Promotions. He is the silver tongue. He is the big bad kaiju, O'Shea Edwards. Oh man, what's happening? Man, half those places yeah. I kind of forgot about until you named them. I was like, oh shit, I did do stuff over there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I'm so hyped to have you on the show, man, right now. Like the 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 inner like the inner kid in me, like it's just like hyped because <laughs> I've been following you for a minute, man. And you're like one of my my top get wrestlers that I had to have on the show. So thank you, one, for coming on the show. Man, thank you for having me, man. This is this is fun. Like it, like I was saying off air, man. Like this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. We, you know, two guys can just sit down and just start talking wrestling, you know, and it's the stuff that you don't see on TV, some stuff you do see on TV. Like I've been wanting to do this for a minute. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, so for our viewers and our listeners who may not know who the big bad kaiju is, let them know who is O'Shea Edwards. Man, O'Shea Edwards is a no no nonsense type guy, man. I'm originally from um, Atlanta, Georgia. I was trained by uh, Johnny Gibson and I mean, uh, sorry, Johnny Swinger and Robert Gibson, respectively. Um, uh, 2019, you know, I left everything, you know, quit my job, sold my house, but We'll talk about that deeper. It's deeper than that. Um, and I moved up to Maryland to uh, join Ring of Honor. I spent, uh, you know, two year, a year training and then, you know, a year on with them, all that good stuff before they finally closed doors. Um, you know, so for me, it's like, uh, you know, man, I know I can make it. So what's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I'm so hyped because, like, STP has been announced on uh, GCWs uh, for the culture. You guys have been taking on hit records. And, like, I'm just, like, my mind is blown because, like, I just can't wait to see, like, y'all just, like, ring it in. Because, like you said, you guys you guys are going to make it, like, and you guys have made it. And, like, just the world is just, like, going to see you guys on a bigger stage just destroy everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, you know. First, I mean, I love this enthusiasm. Holy shit, this is so fun. Um, but then I also realized too, man, the death, the death, there's so many definitions of, of everybody's, when somebody says they've made it, there's always gonna be someone else that has a different definition, you know? Um, for me, like what I consider that I made it, nah, not yet. Um, Cause I, I see so much on the horizon that, that can be done. So for me to say, so when I, for me, when I used to say, hey, hey I made it, man, that's gotta like, hey, you gotta, there gotta be something behind that. So for me, I'm like, have you made it? No, nah, I haven't because there's so much more I want to go do. Um, and that kind of keeps me humble because mm-hmm. I'm like, nah, there's so much more I want to do. So I just kind of keep it real low key. Um, but man, for the culture, man, I'm looking forward to it, man. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, that was something even if I was booking a card, I would have booked like, yeah, I'm booking that. You know, <laughs> um, I, I wish I understand why, but I wish Swear could have been a part of it too. It could have been mm-hmm. a true six, man. That would have been fun, a lot of fun. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Like I said, everybody's going to fancy book, and I do it too. <laughs> well, listen, man, I'm going to be honest because when you're in the gym with one of my favorite people to listen to, just motivationally speak, like, I'm like, yo, man, like, you're near the summit. Like, I was like, yo, CT Fletcher, <laughs> like, really? I was, I was like, dude, that's on another level because, like, 
I just think about like all the things that that man said because they heard what he said on camera. I could only imagine what he's yeah. saying off camera, right? And like one of my favorite <laughs> things that he was saying, right, was when he was like, "Your rest will come when everybody else is doing their set," and I was like, "Yep, that's just yep. life." <laughs> like, it's so man, listen, <laughs> listen, man. That it was. It first of all, it was it was unreal. It was unreal, and it's one of those things of where. When he walks into a room, yo, he walks into a room. He doesn't have to say anything, and he didn't. He just walked in, and everyone kind of stood up because we knew who it was. And then he's he he all he called for us, man. And you're just like, yo, there it is. Okay, this is real. This is real. Um, <laughs> and it was um, it reminded me of my college football days, man. I can say back in the day. I guess I can say that now. Um, but man, su- those summer workouts, even though it was like middle December, still eighty some odd degrees outside. But um, <laughs> but I just I love that atmosphere, man. That was that was a, it reminded me of like a real good time in my life, and just getting getting a chance to like relive that, you know, with with those guys, and like like I said, working out with to me this the, it gets none higher than that right there. Um, yeah, man, those are that stuff. I ain't gonna lie, as corny as it's gonna sound, that stuff dreams are made of right there. Yeah, <laughs> but it really is though, because like I watched this man. Like I remember, I watched one of his videos, and and we'll move on after this. But I remember like no, the first good. time watching him, and he was like, "Yo, this is you ever wonder what happens when the Hulk meets with Superman?" He's like, "Yo, yeah. I'm about to fucking find out." And I was like, yep. "I don't know what's going on, but I'm hyped with this." Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got um, I, I have it saved on my, I have it saved on my YouTube, man. Oh yeah, it's called uh fuck the impossible. You you got you got a good three, four minutes, yo, that's it right there. I have it saved on my YouTube. But anytime I need it, I'm like, okay, I'm listening to this right now. <laughs> but I'm just kind of curious, man, like, so you were a college football player, but how did you find your way into the sport? Um, so man, I've been a wrestling fan since I was a little kid. Just just since I was like eight. The earliest I can remember, like sitting there, like, what? like this is awesome, um, because it was the first time I actually went to my first wrestling event, and that was when my dad took me to wrestling in Madison Square Garden. Um, it was for a, a WWE house show. Man, I couldn't tell you <laughs> who the main event was. I couldn't. I couldn't. But man, I remember I saw Ahmed Johnson for the first time, and I was just like. I was like, I have found another man that could probably kick my dad's ass if if he wanted to. Like, holy crap, this guy is awesome. And um, as a kid, you know, we we're all you kind of gave him one. As an adult, I was like, man, I liked all man Johnson. Like, Jesus Christ, oh my god. <laughs> but um, like it got it kind of went from there. I I was off and on after like the Attitude Era. Uh, it's it, after a while. I was just like, eh, okay. Right. Um, but growing growing up in Atlanta, man, we got WCW a lot. So like, only see saw at the time WWF on Mondays. But man, I saw uh, Nitro. I saw Thunder. Uh, Saturday main event, and then the Sunday re- like WCW was like heavy in Atlanta. So that's so growing up, man, I was big WCW and I heard they was going to get WCW. I'm like, yo, this is sweet, man. Cool. <laughs> um, I, and then once they got bought, I was like, oh, okay, well, that sucks. And, you know, off and on. Um, but it wasn't until... So I will admit, my my depth of independent wrestling is, is not vast. It really, really isn't. Um, I didn't really know about independent wrestling until I saw Ring of Honor for the first time, and that was on mistake. Like I was just channel, I couldn't sleep one day, and I was channel surfing, and uh, I just passed. I was like, whoa, 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 what the fuck, wrestling? <laughs> it's Saturday night at one o'clock in the morning. Wrestling's on? Oh shit! And and um, I remember seeing like it was Jay Lethal. I can't remember who the hell he was wrestling. I just remember seeing Jay Lethal on the screen, and I was just like, yo, this is dope. And then it just took off from there. Um, I found the I first time I met Johnny Swinger. He um he he did the drop in rates, so just two times a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I drive up from Atlanta to Kennesaw, which is like an hour, hour and a half, depending on traffic. 
Um, pay him 20 bucks. We roll around the ring. He teach me this, the bare bone basics, whatever. I did that for a few months. Got really bored because I was the best guy. It was the easiest guy, best guy around. Like, I was just like, whoop, I just had, I picked it up. So they found me this show <laughs> to do in Statesboro, Georgia. And if you don't know where Statesboro is, good. You don't want to know where Statesboro, Georgia is. And I would do this show and I would do these, I would just do these shows and it didn't take me long to realize, okay, I'm athletically, I'm like, I'm the biggest guy here. And I hate to say like, and I'm the best guy here, brother. I've been doing this this long. <laughs> um, and then I started finding some other small shows. I got hooked up with Robert Kirsten. And then I realized that I wasn't as good as I thought I was at the time. <laughs> and Robert let me know that. <laughs> um, but I always appreciated it. Like Robert was never, he wasn't going to bullshit me. Like he called, whatever he said, he called me peanut. And he's like, if it sucks, I'm going to tell you it sucks. And I was like, all right, you got it, Robert. You know, it's whatever. Um, but yeah, and then, then from there, man, it just kind of took off. But I've always been a fan of wrestling. Um, I, I love it. I love the many forms of it. I love the level of nuances that it can create. I love, I'm a sucker for a story. Such a sucker for a story. Um, so like wrestling kind of gave me everything that I wanted and I liked it. Yeah. It's it's wild to think like how you like find things. Cause like even like you, you said it best, right? Like, cause I've told people, I was like, I'm not well-versed in like the indie scene. Like I'm still learning and still growing and still understanding. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I really didn't even find the indie scene until like four years ago. And like, right. I was like, yo, and I, and it happened because one of my friends was like, Oh, Hey, have you ever heard of ring of honor or have you heard of, he's like, you live in Maryland. Do you know what MCW is? I was like, bro, no, what? And then I started looking and I'm like, <laughs> like Oh my God. They're oh yeah, wrestling. and uh, I'm just it's like right, uh, right underneath your nose, right underneath <laughs> your nose the whole time. You had no idea. Yeah, because every time I look at the 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 world, I was like, you know, at the time I was like, yo, AEW was like mm -hmm. not even a thought. You could talk about New Japan or you could talk about WWE, but you're like, everybody's always talking about the E, right? And you and yeah. and and even those even those like in New Japan or Ring of Honor, man, the crowd on that was going to be so small that you can actually converse with. Before, like, you know, Twitter took everything over. Now, you know, you can be a fan, you know, and right. you have someone to, to conversate about. So, yeah, no, man, I I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so you have been in, you've been trained, right, by a lot of, like, great people. But I'm just kind of curious, man, what's the worst bump you've taken? <sighs> just, in, just in the ring in general, the worst yeah. bump? The worst bump or the scariest bump? Why not both? Why not both? Fantastic. <laughs> Give a mouse a cookie, right? Um, <laughs> so I'm early, man. It's Statesboro. Once again, if you don't know where Statesboro is, good. Um, and this guy, he, he, he calls himself Iron Man. Great guy. Great enough guy. Just a local legend, whatever. And I'm like, I remember seeing it and go, wait, wait, wait. How the hell y'all get Iron Man? And I'm thinking, I'm really expecting some dude in like a Iron Man suit. <laughs> like I was expecting the worst, and then I got exactly what I should, what I thought it was, and it was uh, Shane was apparently a welder at his shoot job, and that was his gimmick. He came out with like a, a beeling torch, Iron Man, and I just went, son of a bitch. You got me. <laughs> you, uh, you, man, you got me. You got me, man. Um, <laughs> but apparently, you know, he's the the vet, so I'm trying to do the right thing. And he's like, hey, kid, we'll walk and talk. And da 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 ba 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 And we're working. Match is cool. Match, not, having a good time. And then he whips me into the buckle and goes, punch. And I just kind of go, what? And as soon as I looked up, caught me right above the eye and you know if anybody's anybody you can just press that that's just bone man and as soon as you crack me all down my face oh. and at the time you know because you know you get a call on your face you bleed like a sieve so i'm sitting here and i feel this warm sensation down my face 
And this is when I knew someone fucked up because all of a sudden I heard him go, oh shit. And then the ref goes, oh shit. And I just kind of look and go, I'm bleeding, ain't I? God damn it. <laughs> um, and here's the thing. We finished the match. I still have the scar to this day. It is the funniest story. Like, oh, bro, really? Um, but the worst bump is <laughs> uh, 2000 18 no 2017 2017 um scenic city invitational um it's the uh it's the carnies which is carrie awful uh i'm sorry um carrie uh bleh, sorry nick iggy carrie awful <laughs> and um and so we're doing this big six man and it's me, it's a group called The Hierarchy, like Murder One, uh, Adrian Armour, and Joe Black. But Joe Black got six, so they called me as a, as a last-minute fill-in. So we, um, we do the thing, and he's like, hey, what's the finish? He goes, hey, it's an assisted <laughs> Canadian destroyer. I'm like, oh, okay, like, no big deal. Off the top, do what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and like the dumbass I am, they was like, well, we need you up top because we know you can get my man over. <laughs> it's by, by far the scariest thing in the world. Because as I'm going over and you feel them propelling you over, you're just like, look, man, all it takes is a few degrees. Lights out. <laughs> but it, it, it lands like a car wreck, which is exactly how, you know, that's what everybody wants. You know, the, the spectacle. And, um, yeah, I just remember going, yo, I'll never do that again. Like I will, you're out of your mind if you think I'll do that again. It is it's, no, no way. No, it's just no. that just that freaks me out just thinking about it. Like I, I love throwing. Like I love like taking the Canadian destroyer, which a lot of people would be like, "What?" Like I love yeah. doing that, but yeah, no, off the top rope, a, a, a double, a double, a double, an assist, a double team assisted Canadian destroyer off the top. Yo, just watching it and just watching it on steady ground. You're just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so so we've talked about like one of the scariest moments. We've talked about one of like your worst bumps. But this is kind of a cool question I really want to ask. And this okay. is something that's gonna be kind of more direct, like kind of hit some close to home. So, you know, obviously like you're a leader in the community and in the black wrestling community. And I'm just curious, like, how does one uh, appreciate that title, and then, like, how do you want to keep moving uh, black wrestling forward? Mm, that's a good question. Um, it's it. Here's the thing: like, I never asked for it. I never asked for it, and and because I never asked for it, I take it so much more seriously, because that means it was given, and as quickly as something can be given to you, it quickly can be taken away. Um, so I take pride in the fact that like I get to stand tall, you know, as a proud, you know, proud black American you know, wrestler, you know, and I get to stand in all the time. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't define who I am. You know, I'm very multifaceted. I traveled the world like three times over again, you know. Um, but it, it is nice to be able to represent a a percentage of the the fan base, I should say, that doesn't really get a chance to see like their guy, you know, that is see someone who gets to look like them um, on a, on the biggest stage that they can possibly get themselves on. Um, we're the only sport where all that could be changed with a pencil stroke. Um, because for every argument someone can make for, Oh, I can tell you why so-and-so should be world champions. Like, well, I can make kind of argument why so-and-so should be champion. It's all a matter of opinion. Um, and for so long, we've kind of like let that opinion kind of kind of go go astray. And I'm like, no, no, no. I demand to be in the conversation with everybody else because in my mind, I'm one of the best damn wrestlers in the world. So I'm going to prove that against anybody. Um, you know, and because of that, though, that's I have to re maintain that attitude, that 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 drive and that dog, you know, of a hustle. You know, because that's my way to give back to a community that sometimes just isn't represented. 
to its to its fullest potential. So I, you know, I want people to know that like guys like, you know, Shane, guys like Moses, guys like Khan and Ron Hunt, and you so many like um Mr. Grimm, Darius Carter, Joe Black, uh, Sugar Donkerton, you know, BB Smooth, Roy Johnson, you know, Darius Lockhart. There's so many of those names that people go, who are they? And I'm like, yo, it is up to us to tell that story to get that narrative, like, yo, we are not just we're not here to be celebrated for 29 days and day that's it you know then you shoo us back you know we're not here just to be on just a specialty show we demand to be on all the shows because we're just as good if not better and the only way that happens is we continue just to step up and show out every time the bell rings (laughs) no and that's like one of my favorite things is just like because you know, my best friend is Chaz Evans, right? So mm-hmm. the Dawn, as everybody knows him. Uh, but Chaz and I, like, we go back and we talk all the time about wrestling and, like, how we want to make our impact because, you know, him obviously being black and then myself being Latino, like, we want to, like, bring our cultures and show people, like, hey, man, we're more than just, like, a As you should. It, and we as you be should. Proud of that. Yes, of course. So it's, it's always fun to, like, get to represent. And especially for me because – um you know, and when I'm from my, you know, my mom's from Panama, so my heritage mm-hmm. is Panamanian. And when you go on Wikipedia and you type in like famous world, you know, famous wrestlers from Panama, only two come up, man. So like, I can't fail this. I got to keep pushing my own, my right. own self forward too. So I'm like, and, and but here's the thing, but as, but as you should, you know, you should be proud of who you are and proud of where you came from, you know. It's the reason why we cheer so loudly for everybody else, because this isn't an issue of us versus them. We just it's, it should be an issue of everybody. You know, um, I don't I don't want like and as much as I, I take pride in being like, oh, yeah, she's one of the um, some of the, you know. Top tier black wrestlers, I'm like, no, nah, that's great. Thank you. But now I'm trying to be in the top tier wrestlers and that everything else doesn't matter. It's like, no, his ability is what keeps me up there, you know? And if I got to start, work, like that, that means I got to work three, four times as hard as the next guy. All right, so be it. But at the end, you know, at the end, my point will be proven. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, that's, like, I love it. I love the diversity that independent wrestling brings. It Wrestling is, as much as wrestling isn't for everybody, wrestling is for everybody, you know? It's just sometimes we have to look a little deeper to find it. But it's there. Right. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And I, I 100% agree. I love like, it, it was one thing where I got to see, you know, like, like a ring of honor, or I get to see fight pro wrestling, right? Or I get mm-hmm. to watch something like, uh, wow, or even like CCW over in Delaware, right? And mm-hmm. then you get to, then you get to find out things like Effie's big brunch, right? And I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, what? <laughs> There's this kind of right. wrestle. I just, it's right. so, it's so cool, because like, you could be a fan of the NFL, right? Well, pretty much, let's not play the game. let's not play like it is, right? right? It's run pass or like a great defense, right? That we're always talking about. But in wrestling, you can literally find anything that you mm-hmm. want to watch. <laughs> so yeah. you want you want to imagine seeing some wrestlers who are pretending to be nineteen, twenty characters and wrestle in all black and white. We got, we got you. <laughs> we got you. You want to see guys dress up in big dinosaur costumes and wreck a small city? We got you right over here. It's it's there's like I said, the level of nuance in wrestling is is so vast and so yet so fine at the same time. Like Yo. if you man, whatever you're looking for, brother, we got it. You just gotta look for it, but it's here. It's there. So curious, man, because let's not fake it, right? You are the big bag hides you and you probably have a few of these that you like to do, but after a match, after a wrestling show, what's your uh, what's your post match snack, post match meal? Depending on where I am, I like to just crack a beer open. It's not so much for the taste. I'm not trying to get drunk, but it's one of those when I know I'm about to have a banger, or at least I know the opponent that I'm with that I'm with. We're gonna put on some real dope shit. Like I try to crack a beer open. Don't know why. I just there's that. aura of like seeing like the you know the gaijin in japan sit back there or even in japan after a big win 
they just pow, pop a bear and just sit there. And I'm like, yo, I, I love that. Um, <laughs> and if I can't get a beer, I just go, you know, I go to the bar, I get something. I just want something. Um, and then, because usually, man, you know, you got shows, brother. It's like one, two o'clock in the morning sometimes. Ah, uh, shit. It really becomes the best of what's left. Um, and it, <laughs> in the South, man, I love the good Waffle House at two o'clock in the morning. It was always good, man. I get a plate of bacon, slightly limp, and I get three waffles, extra crispy, smother that some bitch in like syrup. And just like, I can be get a glass of orange juice and a glass of water, and I'm just walk, walk. And this lady looked at me like, you gonna eat all this? I'm like, yes, ma'am, I am. And I was like, can I get a double hamburger too? She's like, are you serious? Like, ma'am, please, not tonight. <laughs> oh, no. I remember we were talking with Shane, and Shane was talking about, um, like, you know, like a good hamburger. But then he brought yeah. up this story about Smoothie King, and he's just like, I wanted Ooh. to hate on it so bad. Oh, <laughs> man, a good Smoothie King. Woo. We set you right. A good Smoothie King set you right. <laughs> That's funny. That's what he was talking. He's like, yeah, man, I wanted to hate on this so much. And I was just like, but you know you can't. what? I it's, can't. It's, 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 it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's it. It's all right. Whatever, man. You know, you can tell me like that. <laughs> Yo, so I need oh, to know. And I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, it's kind of shift the gears. But one sure, thing I sure. need to know: what's one of the hardest lessons that you've had to learn in this business? <sighs> okay, cool. All right, um, let's, let's let's be on some truth. Then everybody ain't your friend, and then those who say that your friends, chances are they ain't your friend either. Everybody will always root for you until you're doing better than them. Those are the lessons. Those are those are the hard truths that I had to learn. Like is even as I was coming a man, and, and but getting this business, not everybody's your friend, and then sometimes even your friends aren't your friends, and everyone's cheering for you until you're doing better than them. That's yeah. a hard lesson. That's a hard lesson I had to learn. Yeah, that is, that is a hard life lesson to learn too. Like yeah. it was something like. On the side, like it was something I learned in the military. I remember one time we, uh, it was me and my two friends, and we were talking about coming up and like we wanted to work in the same kind of system together. And I made a jump, and everybody was like, I thought we were gonna make the jump. And I was like, but someone's got to jump. Like, if we're all yeah, just in your pocket, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I felt like everybody was just like kind of bitter about it. And you, I pride myself on being everybody's like biggest cheerleader. And it's like, you know, because I genuinely get happy for people when I see them kind of move forward. and you know, I'm like, all right, like you guys keep doing your thing. Yeah. Do right. It. Yeah. Like, but like, like, you know, we talked before, it's like you want everyone to cheer for you as loudly as you're cheering for them, which is like, that's not to me, like, that's not wrong. I'm cheering right. loud for my fucking friend. Well, first of all, you're my fucking friends. Why wouldn't I cheer loud for you? You know, because I know when it's my, you know, because it's for me, it's always been the issue of like next man up. It's okay, cool. I'm making it to the next level. So, what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm gonna turn around, offer my hand, but all right, hey, let's go. Come on, like I found a way in. <laughs> Get in here. And you'd be surprised at how many times will you do that for people and you see someone else get over, rightfully so, you're like, oh shit, he made it. Cool. And then you realize, ah, nah. <laughs> you're cool right there. <laughs> it, it, it comes off as it can come off as to, to people who don't know, it can come off as bitter. Which is, I told somebody before, that's a fair assessment, and you're not partially wrong in thinking that. But, you know, it's like I said, it's the what I'm always operating on a team type mentality. And then, you know, I, you have to realize that, man, that everybody's on your team. And it's like, ah, shit. Because sometimes you have a team of one, and sometimes that's the way it needs to be. Yeah, and it was something like I remember when we were talking with Shane too, right? Shane said it like, you know, he's got a close, like a close circle that he like affiliates with, and like that's that's the team, right? And then yeah, you know, they obviously go out and do their thing. And I think that's where like, so we learned our lesson right with prolific because those guys are tight knit unit too, mm -hmm. and then come to find out that Tyree came off the Shane Taylor tree. So when we got to talk to Shane Taylor about it, we were like, oh, <laughs> and then like, so we're now like 
you know, myself, Chaz, and uh, our buddy Prince, and our other friend Noah, we kind of like are watching you guys. This is kind of like modeling our team like off of you guys because we understand like the power. So we are always like, all right, we're in each other's ears, we're each other's friends, we're each other's yep. like biggest cheerleaders, and we're gonna keep it that way. So we do stay selective about like who of we're cheering along. Yes, but we're also yes, like, others like biggest push. Yeah, yeah, you have to be. You know, we are the sum of uh, the people we associate with. You know, like, while well, that could be taken as life lessons, I learned that it's in wrestling, right? Oh, shit. Like, and it's, it's sometimes it can be kind of shitty because you'll have, like, what school do you train from? Train from here. Oh, shit. Who trained you? This guy. Oh, shit. And you're like, oh, come on. Like, let's, let's not be an asshole. You, you know, so you, you get, you get that, you tend to get that. <clears throat> but I mean, it's, it's, it's okay to what I call like keep a, you know, keep an open fist, you know, like the core is my core. Nothing's going to change that. But I do have, you know, outside influences that I'm always, you know, looking at constantly. Cause you know, if I have an opening, go do something, I'm, I'm going to go do it. Yeah. It's definitely, I definitely like the idea of like having, I, I'm going to start using that. Like, so, so if anybody hears me say they know where I came from, but like an open fist, like, I'm definitely going <laughs> to yeah. start using that more. Yeah. I just treat life, treat life with an open fist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yo. All right. So then I'm kind of curious, man, like what kind of advice would you give to like up and coming wrestlers? Don't quit your day job. Do not quit your day job. Um, I can't say that enough. Do not quit your day job. Um, Cause the, the, the odds are against you. The odds are against you. That's not to deter someone from not doing it. No, no. I want everybody. If you want to come get it, come get it. But brother, we can play both sides of the fence. <laughs> you know, um, don't quit your day job. Um, cause you have to find a way to keep bringing money in when, especially when, and we learned this for two years ago when wrestling just stopped and you know, it's like, okay, guys, what do we do now? You know? And if you want to go do a GoFundMe, that's cool. I get it. But for some people that that's not in the cards for them, they're like, no, I got to get through this, you know? And so I tell people, Tom, Hey man, do, if you don't like what you do for work, upgrade your job whatever it takes upgrade your job so that if something happens wrestling you're taken care of you're not stuck in some shit job that you don't want you know um my shoot job takes care of me very well i told somebody before i absolutely love wrestling but if push came to shove i could leave my boots in the middle of that ring and walk away and i wouldn't lose a dime like i wouldn't lose a dime my bills continue to get paid so and that's some one things guys just don't the young guys still don't understand you go to wrestling school, anybody can teach you, you know, a wrist lock and a headlock. They can. But who's going to actually teach you the business? Who's going to actually teach you like, hey, man, like you got to understand your worth. You got to understand your value. You have to continue to be a student of the game. You, If you can wrestle, but you can't talk, poof, you better figure it out. But if you can talk and you can't wrestle, well, you better figure that out, too. You know, because um, actually they sometimes people will take a guy who can talk and can't wrestle over the guy who can wrestle and can't talk. There's been instances. You just like, cause like you can cover that up. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't quit your day job. Um, be true to yourself, be true to yourself, whatever that means to whoever's hearing it, be true to yourself. Um, it is not always about the money, but if you go get your money, not mad at it. Like, I understand, but there are some things that are bigger than the check. It's up to you to figure out what it is. I, yo, I want to touch on both parts because both. Let's go. Of, yeah, bless, man. That's like just <laughs> listening to the. <laughs> so I, I love the fact that, you know, like obviously talking about not quitting your day job, right? Because you do have to have something that you need to fall back on, especially, right. you know, it's funny because like I saw some people there like, hey, like, uh, some people didn't even start a GoFundMe. They just started a Patreon page and was like, hey, I'm selling this and that. And Make you know, your money. Make yeah. the money. Um, you, then you have other guys who just start in January of 2020, and then the pandemic shuts you down for two months. And what do you do? You start a podcast 
asking people to come on and give you advice on what you can do to wrestle better. That's what you do. Hey, but it works. Yeah. It works. You do mental reps, man. Mental reps man, work. That's but it, then, man. The other thing I like, too, is like, um, you know, being true to yourself, right? Like, that was something that I learned pretty quickly. And mm-hmm. I feel like the person that I am in on, like, on and off, right, is essentially the same kind of person. Just maybe turned a little louder in the ring than yeah. in so much behind the scenes. Um, but it was something I learned because, like, I always, I always thought like your gimmick was just kind of given to you by somebody, and then like you had to like adapt it. I didn't know that you could just like change it all together. So I remember like when we first started, no disrespect to my trainer, I love him to death, but he was like, uh, you know, you're you're a former military, so we're gonna use that. And, you know, you got to be very stoic and you got to talk like, you know, like a military guy. Right. And I was like, it's more than apparent. You've never been in the military or met people who were in the military. I was like, but then like, as he was like, okay, well, in six months, I gave it a shot. Right. So it cutting promos, like very serious. Right. And then I was like, let me cut a promo the way I want to cut it and see if it just works for you. And I did. And he was like, all right, we're changing it up this is who you're going to be now. Right. <laughs> so like, so, you saw like the real personality come out and I felt more connected to that character than I did. Of course. Of course. One. You, you will all, and that's the thing. You will always be more connected to the thing that's either you created or the things that making you money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's when uh, the thing is, it's about the give and take. What's, what's more important, the control or the money? Because if someone's going to pay you the absorbent fee, man, you're going to be whatever the hell I tell you to be. <laughs> yes. There's That's nuts and bolts true. of it. The nuts and yeah. bolts. And the minute, and so, and everybody's got to have a price of like, well, I'll be somebody else for so for X amount. Okay. And they're going to call, they're going to pull your card. And, you know, do you got to go do it? You know? Yeah. Um, but like I said, man, there's a, there's a healthy balance. There's a balance. You know, that's a fine line, but you just got to find it. You know, you just got to find it. And what you do, I call that the sweet spot, man. You guys try to stay in that lane as long as humanly possible. Facts. So you've been up and down on the East Coast, over in the West Coast, all throughout this great country. So I'm just kind of curious, and I need to know one do and one don't of the locker room. One do that should be done before you get there is wash your damn gear. Just wash your wash your damn gear, man. Wash your damn gear. Um, one don't. I, I tell people, Tom, don't ask me if I washed your match. Because chances are I didn't. Um, I, I don't, and I don't mean I don't say it to be a dick, but it's just like, hey, did you watch my match? No, was I supposed to? You know, that can come off as a real douchebag thing to say. Like I understand it, but like I have a match I have to call. I have segments I may have to produce. Um, I'm probably have to agent something or somebody asked me a question about something else and I still got to get in the zone, my damn self. No, I don't. But I tell people all the time, if you want me to watch your match, ask me, Hey, can you please watch my match? Sure. My man, I'd love to. I did. I know I need to give it my attention, my, my undivided attention. If I'm not the first show, I mean, the first match of the night, that's usually what I watch. Like, fully is the first match okay cool the crowd is this they respond to this okay um uh there's a roaming cam i know okay where's how's a roaming cam look okay cool hard times there all right i can pipe by that spot over there blah 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 you know i'm as this first match is going on i'm watching them seeing what the crowd's reacting to and then already i'm thinking about how i want to wrestle tonight because i mean i tell people i'm like hey man you know are you wrestling for you wrestling for them so I wrestle for them. Are you sure? Because they're not enjoying it. Um, if they're a simple crowd, why are we doing a double team? You know, a double team assisted Canadian destroyer off the top rope. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? It's it's a simple, you know, it's a simple wrestling town crowd. Yo, man, let's just. You know, give me an old international <laughs> fish out of water drill. Let's get the hell out of here. You know, like, come, you know, like, there, we can save so many bumps if we just stop, if we just stop wrestling for each other, I mean, for yourself and just wrestle for the crowd. Um, and 
yeah, just yeah. So like, do wash your gear and don't ask me if I haven't watched your match if you haven't asked me in particular to watch your match because I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I'll I'll throw one in there too, right? And, All right. And just, yeah, I, yeah. Come on, come I on. I do. I do typically throw a do and don't right in there, and everybody heard the one. And by this time, I think this is episode two twenty five. People know. Okay, shake hands with everybody in the ring. We we know that. Okay, we talk about that. COVID, fist bump, whatever, elbow. <laughs> yeah, you get one of these. <laughs> one, one of those, right? Whatever. Uh, but one of my do's is um, like, do treat everybody the same. Like, do mutual respect. A mutual, yeah, respect. A mutual respect. Mutual respect. Always. And I think my don't. This is my favorite thing. I'm going to say, don't turn down an opportunity to do something with the show. Cause you never know. Somebody might just ask you randomly to be a druid. Yeah. You're just gonna pop in the oh, show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're asking you for a reason. You know, yeah. they're asking you for a reason. Yeah, because you know, and you never know where that road leads. Somebody might come on a right. show, say they owe you one. You know, it just it is what it is. You're, <laughs> you're you're at, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. I love yo. I that was the one thing. Like I remember, so I had someone come to me. Uh, Killian McMurphy was like, "Hey man, do you want to be a druid?" I was like, "Yeah," without <laughs> like hesitating. I was like, "I'm in." And then I hear, "I hear, well, you can be a druid for Moses." Okay, bet. And all of a sudden, it's like, "Hey, you're a druid for him. You want to be a druid for me?" Like, of course. Like, Let's yeah, go. I'm in it too. Great man. <laughs> but never say no because you never, never know. Say that's no. You gonna never be. know. You never know where it's gonna go. <laughs> Yo, so those are really kind of like all my hard hitting questions. But we do got to get into the second best segment of this podcast okay you're wondering what the first is it's the red dogs power rankings that you can find every sunday on our debate show by the way to let you know stp the only independent group to ever top the red dogs power rankings what's up yeah it was cool uh but this is the three count podcast 10 count questions and mr o'shea this is how it works i'm gonna fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast and uh whatever's your answer that's that's your answer Okay. <laughs> so we're going to put on an imaginary, ti- imaginary timer for added pressure. Bing. Bing. <laughs> and here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Smackdown. Favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. Sonic or Mario? Mario. Favorite color? Blue. Too hot or too cold? Too cold. Favorite signature move? Spine Buster. Let's go. PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. Favorite podcast? The Bonfire. Hey. Nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Ooh. Darius Lockhart. Let's do. Let's do. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this show. Favorite curse word? Bullshit. <laughs> Bet those are all my questions that I have to ask. But the last thing I just need is Mr. Edwards, just let our people know where they can find you. Yeah, man. Um, you can find me on, on Twitter at Big Bad Kaiju, um, Instagram, Big Bad Kaiju dot a favorite word. Um also have like cameo apparently. I don't know if that's the little thing, but you know, I'm on cameo. And then have what a maneuver, dude. What a maneuver dot net backslash OSHA Edwards. All my stuff should pop up right from there. Um, you can find me on Facebook, but I tell you right now, hey man, I ain't gonna add you, dog. Just stop trying. <laughs> Damn it, that would explain a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, not you, not you. If I follow you, <laughs> I tell people time. If I follow you on Twitter, that's a bigger deal. Hey, let's go. I actually, because it's like I actually want to listen to what someone has to say on Twitter. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> after I'm just here for, I'm here for the laugh. Like, who's gonna make me laugh? <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know, it is ridiculous. Wrestling, wrestling Twitter. Is like one of the, the craziest worst. things. Like it's I've the ever worst. Seen. It's the worst thing in the world. Oh my god, that that toxic wasteland. Ugh, it's god awful. It's or like maybe everybody it's has a voice. Everybody has a voice. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my god. And I love watching it because, like, you can see, like, you can see, like, there's like the AEW stands and the WWE stands, but yep. then more importantly. There's everybody else, like the indie stands that are like, oh, I love watching people defend like indie wrestling, but in a sense of like they're defending like 
their guy in indie wrestling. <laughs> and that's it's like, man, just say who you like and just stand in it. Like, nope, okay, man, it's whatever. Cool. You so was those best. So was those best. Man, that's what but you bunch of nerds, quit it. Just quit. <laughs> And I, I can say that because I'm just as I'm just a nerd for it. I'm just as big as nerd. I'm like, yo, man, are we really gonna do this today? Come on, you just get jackasses. Um, the one <laughs> thing that I, the one bit of advice I got about Twitter, and as a worker, you need to understand this too, is every day there's a main character on Twitter. Do not be that person. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Do not be the main character of the day. That's it. <laughs> that's it. No, oh, that's, that's great advice. That's great advice. And that's something that I'm going to make sure that I, I try to stay away from because I don't want to be that guy. Nah, man. I'm, I'm here to steal memes and just throw, and throw some shade here and there and just laugh. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Bet. Well, that's, that's kind of it, man. So, like, like every good wrestling match, we got to take it home because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering, and I am your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. That's right, your Sherpa. Finally, I said it myself. I don't want you guys saying it anymore. I'm just going to keep it to myself. Anyway, but like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And you see him right next to me. It's the big, bad Kaiju, O'Shea Edwards himself. So you guys know what to do. Tune in to the next episode and be there, or you just wait for this episode to end. You wait for that outro, and then you choose another episode to listen to. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want you to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the three count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the three count pod, give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast and in there you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh! At prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So... Show us some support, please.